For Comedy Hype News, I'm Terrence Sims. The late night talk show has been a staple of American TV since the 1940s. Since then, we've seen a multitude of comedians and personalities assume the role of a late night talk show host to varying degrees of success. David Letterman, Jay Leno, Chris Rock, and Trevor Noah all have put on a suit to tell jokes, participate in comedy sketches, and interview the latest celebrities in the Hollywood industry. Late night hosts making fun of celebrities who made headlines isn't new at all. Those celebrities barking back at the late night hosts is something that's all too common as well. David Letterman had a feud with Oprah that lasted over a decade. Jimmy Kimmel upsets Kanye West after he spoofed the interview West did with the BBC. Luckily, those two feuds ended with both sides reconciling with one another. Arsenio Hall is another talk show host who ruffled feathers with several jokes and temporary made enemies with a few Hollywood elites during his time on Arsenio Hall's show. Some of the feuds were patched up. Others didn't seem to have a happy ending. The Arsenio Hall show lasted for five years and was at the top of the ratings for most of his run. Despite the mind-blowing success of the show, not everyone was a fan. Here are some of the people Arsenio Hall pissed off. Spike Lee. Hall was a bona fide funny man, but he found himself in a highly publicized feud with Spike Lee after he suggested that Eddie Murphy wasn't using his fame and influence to benefit other black performers. This was too close to home for Hall, who was best friends with Murphy. Ironically, Hall and Murphy were also members of the Black Pack, a group of Hollywood's elite black entertainers created to do what Spike Lee accused Murphy of not doing. Lee didn't fully express his disappointment on Hall's couch at the time, but was later quoted as calling him an Uncle Tom. Later, Hall would tell reporters that Lee has his blacker than thou thing going. He's the new Malcolm and everyone else is a money-grubbing hustler. The verbal war escalated and the world watched. Taking the high road, Hall says he realized they were being used to bring each other down and he was over it. The deal is what Spike and I realized is we were being used. Hall explained that this was an old Hollywood trick to divide and conquer. I call it the bingo long plantation syndrome. That's when they say, let Spike tie him to a tree and whip him. Let them keep each other down. Whenever they can concentrate on some kind of battle, what they do is take the spotlight off our accomplishments. But the days of us keeping each other down, the days of us fighting each other and not understanding there is tremendous power in unity are over. An interview with Playboy magazine tried to get to the bottom of things when a reporter specifically asked about the two. What's the deal between you and Arsenio Hall? Deal? What deal? I've been on his show twice. You have to be specific. Wasn't there a quarrel between the two of you? I criticized him once. I never criticize them as a talk show host. Our understanding is that you appeared on his show last summer and were supposed to be back about a month later and were disinvited. Yeah, they canceled on me at the last minute. Didn't even hear from them. Some assistants said they didn't want me on the show. Isn't it in the past? Nothing to say about it. It's all been worked out. I was on his show for more better. It appears that Spike felt the same way as Hall and it was better to move on. Willis Edwards. Willis Edwards is the former president of the NAACP, and like Spike Lee, he would criticize Arsenio for not employing enough black people. The Ebony article where this piece of information came from was quick to point out that at the time, Hall's producer, director, and publicist were white women. Arsenio's defense? These are people who have been with me from the beginning. It's unfair for someone to put me in the position where I have to change 200 years of oppression in my first week. Hall would then point out that his talent coordinator, stage manager, and wardrobe director are black in response to Ebony's singling out of white women on staff. The back and forth between Hall and Edwards continued into legal territory where Edwards filed two $10 million lawsuits against Hall. The first lawsuit claimed that Hall allegedly called Edwards an extortionist in the Los Angeles newspaper. The story claimed that Edwards tried to extort a $40,000 donation to the NAACP from Hall by suggesting that Hall wouldn't reveal the black and white ratio of his staff. The second lawsuit was for allegedly calling Edwards a pimp. Hall's run-in with Roseanne would be much different. I'm having to say something about Arsenio Hall. Roseanne Barr. Hall began telling fat jokes about Roseanne before showing his audience an unflattering picture of Roseanne and her husband in swimsuits. The man who took the picture, Alexander Byron, sued Hall and claimed that he violated his copyright protection by showing the honeymoon photos according to Entertainment Weekly. Roseanne reacted to this body shaming by retaliating and questioning Hall's sexual preference. 
Roseanne closed one of her stand-up acts with a joke saying in part, it isn't that often we get to see a black nerd. Most nerds are white. She went on to say that Arsenio is a triangle-headed Eddie Murphy look-alike mother Hall responded to Roseanne's anti-Arsenio remarks. My thing is, if you do a joke on a show and call me gay, what's the rule? She did a joke where she said there would have been great comedy teams in the world. Lucy and Ricky, George and Gracie, and Arsenio and Jim Neighbors. Now that is a very hip Hollywood joke to say that I'm gay and I'm sleeping with Jim Neighbors. When you challenge a black man's manhood, there are no rules anymore. After speaking with Roseanne's husband, Hall called a truce. I realized I was really hurting her, Madonna. When Madonna appeared as a guest on his show, she suggested Arsenio and Eddie were not friends, but lovers. She also teased Hall about his failed romance with Paula Abdul. I want to know how it feels to be dumped for John Stamos. And she didn't stop there. Madonna took it to Hall's appearance and that sent the late night host into a rage. Madonna insinuated that if Hall was one of her backup dancers, he couldn't wear his hair in the way it was cut. Hall tolerated the insults off camera because what he wanted to do would not have been good television. Off camera, he said, first, Madonna, I would never have to work for you because I have as much money as you have. Number two, I've seen your dancers and I'm nothing like them. They work for you, I work with you. Point number three is you wanted to be black when you were little, but you are not black, so don't try to understand blackness. It is not your place to dictate black hair, care, or fashion. You have borrowed our sound, but not our sensibilities. So don't make any attempts to tell me how I should look. Rounding off this list is another musician, Latoya Jackson. Following Latoya Jackson's Playboy magazine feature, Hall joked with his audience making assumptions that the singer got her breasts enlarged. The sister of the late legend Michael Jackson wrote into the show and Hall read the handwritten from Jackson on an episode of his show that aired on December 7th, 1989. The letter said, Dear Arsenio, I have to get something off my chest. I am very disappointed that you have continued making ridiculous and untrue statements claiming that my breasts have been artificially enlarged. If you feel you are qualified to tell the difference, you are quite welcome to visit me the next time you're in New York. Latoya then following up by sending Arsenio Hall a waffle iron, 10 points of green hairstyling gel, and a wrapped razor blade with a note saying, why don't you shave your head and start over? In a second letter, Jackson said, knowing how meticulous you are about your appearance and the amount of time you spend on your hair each day, I tried to select items that would make this process quicker and easier. Jackson never got the chance to go on the Arsenio Hall show, but it's hard to believe that two stars are still holding a grudge, especially considering earlier this year, Jackson found a memory of the Arsenio Hall show on Twitter and gave Hall his flowers. On the social media site, a clip of Eddie Murphy being interviewed by Hall was posted. The two are then surprised by Michael Jackson. Latoya said, so I'm loving this Arsenio Hall, Eddie Murphy, and of course, Michael Jackson. You guys are the greatest. From 1989 to 1994, Arsenio Hall brought a flavor like no other to the screen, giving the culture classic moments both good and not so good. Making jokes about what you see in the news is common practice for a comedian and a formula that has been proven to work each and every time. Of course, there's backlash on a rare occasion, but for the most part, it's understood that once you make the news, it's fair game. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for our new streaming service with all new original content on ComedyHype.com. For Comedy Hype News, I'm Terrence Sims.